This is going to be a very sensitive subject. Is one of the biggest pandemics in the world is incest. Mm, crazy, huh? Incest seems to be at an all-time high. Before, it used to be kept on a down low and nobody talked about it. Well, this is my first time feeling led by God, by the scripture he led me to. This is my first time addressing it in a sermon. And I believe that God is saying that there are too many families that have allowed, covered up, hushed, hushed, and excused all levels of incest mm, behind closed doors. Starting at verse one again. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall... Therefore, keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. Now, let's stop there for a minute. I can't tell you how many people I know including myself, who have been victim of uh, in-family incestual molestation, incestual rape, consensual incestual sex, and the families keep it on the down low. They hush, hush for a variety of reasons. But let me tell you this. God doesn't keep it on the down low. God deals with problems when he sees them. And I'm telling you, molestation, in-family rape, all kind of stuff is going on. I've seen on YouTube videos of where a brother and sister wanted to, to get a law passed so they could get married. A mother and a son, she wanted to marry her son. It's crazy. Now, I don't know if this stuff is happening because people are devoid and ignorant of the knowledge that's uh, of the word that's in the Bible dealing with this subject. But it not only deals with incest, it deals with homosexuality. It just, this one chapter right here in Leviticus 18, it really pulls the, it, it drops the drawers and pulls the blanket off and exposes it all. All right, we're, we're going to verse seven now. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. <clears throat> thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. In other words, y'all, you shouldn't have sex with your mama, your papa, and your papa and your mama shouldn't have sex with you. Just break that down. All right. Verse eight, the nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. And that's something. So if your father goes off and marries somebody else and, and, and you think they are uh, a, a fox and you just got to check that out. Hands off, baby. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. All right. Verse uh, nine. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, in other words, your half-brother or your half-sister, whether she be born at home or born abroad or born elsewhere, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Ain't that a trip? <clears throat> the nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. 
for theirs is thine own nakedness. I've, I've heard stories of people that said that their uncle or their aunt molested them. You know, they thought they were their favorite niece or their favorite nephew, and they found out that it was a whole lot deeper than that. It was shady, baby. And they thought that it was all about love and family. No, baby, it was all about lust and sex. That's the kind of stuff that's happening in families nowadays. And you wonder why homosexuality is at an all-time high. It's family members that are turning people out left and right, screwing their heads up. They don't know what they want when they get older. That's why God says don't do this mess. It messes people up. You have no idea. It even opens the door for demonic attacks and demonic oppression. Whether you believe in them or not, they exist, baby. Verse 10. The nakedness of, yeah, this is dealing with what I just read, of thy son's daughter and thy daughter's daughter. We already dealt with that. Even their, their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. Verse 11, the nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter. So let's say that, uh, that Billy Joe is your pappy and Susie Q is his new wife. Well, Susie Q has a daughter named Girly Cutie Pie. And Girly Cutie Pie is real cute. You find her a fox. Well, guess what? You may not be blood, but you and your father are blood. And even though Cutie Pie ain't your blood, you still have no right to touch her. Because the woman that's her mother is your father's wife. That brings her into being your half-sister. You cannot touch that. See, I'm breaking it down because I'm of the impression from God giving me this scripture of all things that there are a lot of you that don't really know that there's a line drawn in the sand. And there are some things you are not to cross over. But unfortunately, families don't always teach on this because you got kids raising kids and nobody knows how to raise and teach the kids. They just raise and feed them and let them grow wild like weeds. Who knows what they're up to when mom and pop ain't home? Because nobody's teaching them. Or nobody taught you, so you don't even know. But God wants his people to know what's up. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, let's go to verse 12. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. That's your aunt. She is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover. See, some of you kids, you know, you nosy. Or some of you adults, you're peeping toms. And you want to peep through the keyholes. And you want to get little hidden cameras. And, and you know, because your father's sister is a fox. Mm-hmm. So you decide you're going to find out what's all up under that. And you check it out. Now, you know, Jesus said you don't have to have sex to commit adultery or, or fornication. All you got to do is look on a woman or a man in lust. And that's what some of you guys do. You set these things up. You take videos and you lust after your own family members. Hmm. Verse 13, thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, your aunt, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother, uncle. Thou shalt not approach to his wife either. She is thine aunt. Thou shalt not cover the nakedness, uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. That means don't even look on her to lust after her, y'all. According to New Testament terms, because in the New Testament, the bar is raised, not lowered. 
Hmm. Verse 17. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswomen. Women. It is wickedness. 18. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. 20. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally. In other words, don't even foreplay, y'all, kissing, smooching, and all that with thy neighbor's wife or, or full-out sex to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Melech, neither shalt thou profane the name of, the, of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with, here's, here's the homosexual part, Verse 22, and I'm going to read it slowly so you can't say it's not in there. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as if you're living or, or, or having sex. Listen, it actually says, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an, it doesn't say just a sin. This one classifies this one. It is an abomination. 23. Neither shall neither shalt thou lie with any beast. They got people, I think it was about three years ago, four years ago, I saw on YouTube videos of people who wanted, who were marrying, one man married his goat. Yes. I mean. This this one guy, he was in love with his daughter. I mean, these people are, uh, 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 they've said years ago in the 18, 1900s where women were known to allow their horses to penetrate them. I'm telling you, it's been going on for centuries, but it is at an all-time high now. Because part of the problem with parents not being allowed to discipline their kids is they throw their hands up and they don't do anything. They just feed them and clothe them and let them have their way. Then you wonder why we have a society that's full of chaos, confusion. Tri oh, crazy. Okay, let me move on. Verse 23. I'm going to read this again. Thou shalt... Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not yourself in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Mm. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity upon it. <clears throat> I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. That's deep. You shall therefore keep. Mm, mm, mm. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that should journeyth with you. Wow. This is this is deep. See, one of the things that, that we don't recognize is that some of why abortion is so high. Not the only reason, trust me. What I'm saying is one of those reasons is because you got daddies getting their daughters pregnant. You got sons getting their mamas pregnant. I mean, it gets so twisted and coiled up. It's like, can you imagine? Imagine how sick this is. A boy has sex with his mama. The mama gets pregnant, has a boy. The boy has to call 
the, the oldest son that got her pregnant, his brother. That's, that's confusion. That is messed up. And you don't realize how many of you have messed up your kids' minds. Some of you adults who have messed with kids have messed them up. When you do that, there's a transfer of the, of the demonic. And when you transfer your demons onto a child or on or a child to a child or a man to a man, a woman, a woman, or whatever, or adult to child, what ends up happening, and sometimes, in some cases, teenager to adult. Because there are teenagers out there that are filled with promiscuity. And they come on to adults like crazy. But see, what happens is a lot of this happens because there are demonic transfers. And when there is a sexual or foreplay or anything that's consensual, or one doesn't really know what's going on, but the other one is really into it and they've got their demons, what happens is that transfer takes place. When that transfer gets on the victim, so to speak, the victim grows up and that victim lives a life of confusion because they don't know what they want because they weren't allowed to be innocent during the time they were supposed to stay innocent because you messed over them. You messed them up. Trying to get your urges and your needs met, you messed them up. So now they got to battle your demons that you transferred to them. It's torment. That's why you got so many folks strung out on drugs, so many folks strung out on alcohol, so many folks strung out on gambling and all kind of crazy habits and por pornography addiction and prostitution and all of this mess because they have been messed over. Not all of them, but that's why there's so much mess going on. Folks don't know if they're coming or going in this society. You don't know what's right or wrong. You call wrong right, you call right wrong. And you think everything is okay, everybody's okay, you're okay, I'm okay, everything's okay, and that's okay. No, it's not okay. It's sick, sin sick. And God's not winking at it either. I saw two uh two siblings playing with a little baby one time, and I had to pull the mother's coattail because they were sticking their tongue in the baby's mouth. And I said, Oh no, I know where this is headed. I pulled mama's coattail, mama got on them real quick, and that stuff stopped. But what would have happened if Mama Sita wasn't interested and she didn't want to hear what I had to say? And she turned a blind eye, like some of you mothers do, because you're in denial. You don't want to admit that you got some sick stuff going on in your in your little close knit family, so you ignore it, and you allow the seedling to become a monster in your family. And next thing you know, you got all kind of incest going on between your your sons and your daughters. And it's, it's, it's haywire. And you got orgies going on in your house when you're at work. Because you never addressed it. Families, listen, you got to address these problems. You can't let it slide. You got to sit down and talk with your children. You got to confront the adults that you know are guilty. You can't let it lie. You've got to address this stuff. Whether you believe in God or not, you better address it, baby, or you will have hell on earth. Right there behind closed doors in your home. And you wonder why you're running back and forth to the jailhouse, bailing your children out because they're always getting into mischief and trouble. They don't know who they are. They're confused. So much is allowed now. 
You get to school, the kids don't know what's right, what's wrong. They don't know a boy from a girl. They don't know what to do, what not to do. Because everything is allowed now. It's a very scary time we live in. And you don't realize it. But the more we allow this stuff, the more demons are going to be set loose. The happier we make Satan. All right. Let's go on to Isaiah chapter 8. This is another problem we have in society. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Verse 19. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 and on. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God? Wait, I, I've, I've got to say this. It's coming to my mind. It's like the Lord saying, you're not done with the first one yet. So let me move a little deeper with that. Some of you struggle with whether you are bent towards male or female. You're not sure which gender you want to go. Some of you identify with being bisexual. What happens with that demonic transfer? Is there are times, listen, there are times when you're in a room with a homosexual who is lusting after you you're not lusting after them. You're not thinking about them. You're about your own thing. But they're lusting after you. And they find a way to get your attention and spend some time with you. And as they spend time with you, you start having sexual desires for them. The Lord just thundered in my heart to deal with this. Because this is the deceptive thing that leads a lot of people into homosexuality. You're not feeling what you want from them. You're not feeling the desire coming from you. The desire you're feeling towards them is coming from their desire for you. Whether they're touching you or just talking to you. The demons pounce. Just like a, a fly lighting on garbage. They pounce and they start to manipulate your desires. And while you're talking to them and they're letting you know how they're turned on to you, you start getting turned on to them. But check it out. If you resist and they leave your company, you notice you don't feel that for them anymore. What you're feeling is there. That's why, thank you, Lord. That's why many of you think that you are homosexual as a child, that you start, you were born as a homosexual. That's why some of you, I'm not blanketing this. I'm saying some of you. Some of you think that it started Coming out the womb or four or five or six, seven, eight years old, you became aware. Well, you became aware because someone around you was already there. And what's on them transferred to your emotions and you are feeling what they want from you. So you start thinking, well, maybe I like same sex. Maybe I like. Do you see what I'm saying? When a person has demons on them, they bring an atmosphere in the room. And when they bring an atmosphere in the room, I remember I was at a nightclub and this guy was at the nightclub. He was fine. Oh, this boy was pretty. He was fine, baby. Whew. Let me emphasize. Fine. All right. The guy kept looking at me. 
I mean, I've had guys look at me before, but we looked and okay, we checked each other out. But with this guy, I was getting so hot. And I was like, I don't even know him. But wow, maybe we're supposed to be together because I have all this desire. No, it was his lust. See, that's where we get fooled. That's where God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah. When you, oh, here's another one. I was taking an, an in-service uh, training at a job with disturbed kids. And they were training us on how they can transfer their negative emotions onto you. They didn't put it in the form of demonic. But me as a Christian, I knew what it was really going on. Okay, so this at this one point, I remember I was dealing with a little boy. And I won't mention his name. Let's just call him Appleseed. This little boy had such a thing of anger on him, and he was such a victim. He was a victim of abuse. I mean, horrible abuse. And he was emotionally disturbed, y'all. And I remember as he was talking to me, in my mind, I started, he was mocking. He was mocking and go, trying to goad me into hitting him. Don't you want to hit me? Don't you want to hit me? And as he was saying it, I saw images in my mind of throwing him against the wall and beating him to a pulp. And I said, oh, my goodness. And when we had the in-service training, they said that is exactly what happens. The 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 abused kids, that's what they know. And that's what they try to goad you into doing is abusing them the way that the other people abuse them, even though it hurts, even though they don't want it. But that's all they know. And that's their drama. And they think they're having control over you by manipulating you to hurt them. It's the weirdest thing, but it's a transfer. And you feel what they want you to do, what they're trying to goad you into doing. It's the same thing sexually. You think you're homosexual at seven. No, you got around a homosexual at seven. And that homosexual transferred their desires onto you. So you buy into it. Now, if you don't agree with it, you're going to be kind of okay as long as they don't get their hands on you. If they can't touch you, you're going to be all right. But if they get their hands on you, baby, even if you didn't want it, you're going to be struggling for a long time till you get deliverance from God. And yes, he can deliver. He can. I've known couples where the husband was a former homosexual, full-blown baby, not by, all the way. And they got delivered, got married, had kids, and lived happily ever after. Never went back to the homosexual life again. Because it, a lot of the homosexual thing is demonic. And demons make, they know how to make you feel what they want. And you think you're wanting it, but you're not. It's them. Now, I've never taught on this in a message, but God specifically led me to Isaiah, uh, to um, Leviticus 18 and Isaiah chapter 8. Yes. So to let you know, it's not a hopeless situation. It's not hopeless at all. Now I'm going to move on to Isaiah chapter 8 because he wanted to deal with this particular aspect. I've, I've dealt with that now. I'm done. Now I can move on. Wow. <laughs> I thought I was done before. This won't take as long. Okay. This one here. <clears throat> starting at 19. And when they say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it, hardly be stead of hunger, and it shall come to pass 
that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and will look and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble, darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. You see, you know, when you're dealing with the occult, when you're dealing with new age, uh, witchcraft, whether it's white magic, black magic, all, all of it is, is against God's law. The only magic you got going for you if you're in Christ is the Holy Spirit. And that ain't magic. That's the real thing. That's the true power of God working in your life. But when you go to all these little substitutes, all these substitutes, they're more harm than good. Oh, they scratch an itch for a minute, but after that minute is over and the real deal stands up and you realize what you got yourself into and it ain't so easy to get out, because when it gets a grip on you, baby, you might be screaming to get out. But if you ain't hollering in the name of Jesus, you're locked in and locked down. So you have to be very careful because you allow curses into your lives, your children's lives, into your health. You allow curses. Yeah, the devil's going to pamper you for a minute to keep you locked in, to make you so sure that ain't nothing going to work better than this. But once you get in so far, just like a pimp, a pimp's got promises for his prostitute, but he's got a bunch of black eyes and broken bones waiting for her too, if she doesn't do the way he wants him to do. So you have to remember, you're playing with fire when you play with witchcraft. And you're definitely against God when you're doing it. Because to God, witchcraft is an abomination. All right, that is going to close that. I'm not going to go much further. I did a video last night. I uploaded it, and the video shows how the demon, it's, it's a demon, it's a skit, and I'll include it with this when I upload it to you guys who watch my videos all the time. It's only a two and a half minute video, but it is an enactment with a little bit of me in between um, explaining what's going on. And I announced myself as the demon of, of discouragement and the way the demons of discouragement work. So all of that will be in the video and you'll see it. But see, there's a lot that happens in the demonic realm. And if we are not made aware of his devices and of his schemes, we can be so sidestepped, so tripped up, so so played, so psyched out that we we wouldn't know our behind from a hole in the wall if 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 we don't have something to shed light on this stuff. All this is in the darkness. It's shrouded in lies. It's shrouded in darkness. You have got to be careful what you put your hands to to play with. Because you might reach your hand out one time too many. And when that thing gets a hold on you, you cannot break loose. A stronghold can turn out to be a possession if you're not careful. And you won't even know your name if it was up in neon lights. That's what the Bible means when it says confusion. All this incest, witchcraft, all this stuff, all of it brings confusion y'all and it does psychological damage spiritual damage curses all kind of mess strongholds all right so here's your answer to the problem isaiah 53 go with me to isaiah 53 who shall believe the report to whom is the arm of the lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when ye shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. That's why it's so funny how they present Jesus, because he's so pretty. The Bible already tells you right there, he's not attractive. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. 
To this day, we esteem him not, don't we? Huh? A lot of you out there don't esteem him at all. You don't care about him. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, it was upon him. And with his stripes, so scars on his back, that's what it means when it says stripes. We are healed. No matter what your dilemma is, no matter what your stronghold is, you can be delivered. You can be set free. It's not a life sentence, y'all. Some of you have never thought of turning to Jesus. But I'm going to tell you, baby, Jesus has authority over the devil, over the demons, over the principalities, over wickedness in high places. Jesus has all authority over all of it, baby. And when you wrap yourself up in Christ Jesus, you have some weapons to work with. Mm -hmm. The devil can't bully you anymore. So please take my word for it. Call on the Lord while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Consider this. I'm going to say this prayer for those of you who have never given your heart or who need to recommit. Father, I ask you to forgive me. Have mercy on me. I know I messed up. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. But I ask you, Lord, I want to recommit to you. And for those of you who have never done it, the Lord, I don't understand it all, but I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I want him to take the driver's seat because I don't know what I'm doing. I got myself into so much mess. I'm tired and oppressing my. Well, I ask you, Lord, to not only forgive me, and, 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 and let Jesus in my heart, but I ask you also to fill me with your Holy Spirit and to deliver and heal me on the inner man because I'm messed up, toe up from the floor. I need a lot of help. Be my psychiatrist, my psychologist, my counselor. Be everything I need you to be in my life and erase all the hurts, all the wounds, all the open runny sores and put me back together again. Make me whole. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless those of you who have said that prayer with me. Amen. We're done.